Did you yell at him yet? For what? Oh. <laughs> Is it on your screen? Doug, uh, we're giving you 15 second notice. Do I have to press this to get it started at all? It should just come no, on. No, you should come on. Okay. Whoops. Rosie, if I was I'd know that. And you may have to push the button. I think that's why it came up last time, but I didn't see which button you pushed. What's his name downstairs? Doug. Doug, if you can hear us down there, can you come up and turn on the... Um, Oh, we can't. It's we not need, on here. Uh, Doug, we need. It's we not need on, on up here. On the TV. Just let it, just no, we want to see it up here. We want it. I'll come back later. Okay. You're on, you're on live right now. That should be done first. <laughs> okay, we bring to you all of the Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting of Monday, May 22nd, 2006. Town, town Council Chambers. Uh, the first item on our agenda is regular business. Uh, we have two new members on the board tonight. Uh, Roseanne Quacks is an alternate, and Scott Quinlan as a member. You people both had enough time to acquaint yourself with the rules and regulations to see somewhat realize what you have to do tonight. Okay, because basically it's your determination as to whether <coughs> you feel you are had enough information to participate in tonight's meeting. If you feel you haven't, then you will be at it as a full member. You could recuse yourself if you didn't feel you had enough time. You mm -hmm. time. You all said, okay. Uh, yep, yep, the uh, Richard Bowen is on vacation tonight, so I will appoint Roseanne Quacks as an alternate sit in his position. And Mr. Chair, um, the attorney pr representing um, the applicant this evening is my attorney. So I'll leave it up to the board's discretion as to whether or not I should step down or not, according to RSA 674 semicolon 14, disqualification of member. I don't think there's any conflict here. I don't either. There's two separate issues. Yeah. What do you think? I, got, I have no problem. It's basically the statute says you will decide. You can ask for our opinion. We can give it, but I the don't ultimate think. determination of whether you sit is something. Uh, I don't see a conflict. So. Me neither. I have no problem. You were, you're going to sit? Um, Mr. Radigan is my attorney. Or? It's your decision. Rosie. It's my decision? Okay. All right. I think I'll sit. Is this okay. from you? Therefore, we have a full board. Therefore, there will be no, if you had sat out, they would have the option of, of uh, continuing. Okay, we d we'll have a full five-member board. <coughs> the first out of business is Mark King, a variance, <coughs> reference section 209 of the New Market Zoning Ordinance. The applicant requests a variance to permit a service use in the R2 zone to utilize the pre-existing non-conforming four-unit residential dwelling for a dry cleaning business. The lot is located at map U5, lot 7, in the R2 zone. Mr. Radigan, you will be, did you first give us a overview of what you are proposing here before we get into the uh, items required sure. for variance? Be happy to. Um, my name is John Radigan uh, from the law firm of Donahue, Tucker, and Shindell. I represent Mr. Kim. Um, for the benefit of the board and members of the public here, the, here this evening. Um, this is a, about a two-acre lot. It's on the bend. As it bends uh, right to left as it comes, comes into town um, on one th at a 135 exit of road. Um, the property in question, I understand it, um, had an earlier life as a variety store, convenience store. And um, a while back the zoning changed, and it changed it to the present zone. Um, it's adjacent to 
other uses that are uh, that are commercial we've got the storage building which is kind of across that little bridge thing off on the left hand side and um, mr. Kim has owned the property for about a year it needs a lot of work it's in tough shape there are presently two apartment dwellings on the top floor which is the ground level as you approach the building which has the parking area dirt parking area in front and then two apartment levels uh, two apartments on the ground floor beneath that as it falls back away with the slope of the ground it's high up here and then it slopes down to the back and then around the back there's also a separate non-conforming le but legal mobile home use that's been on the property for a long period of time which is occupied um, my client is in the dry cleaning business and what he'd like to do is to convert the top portion where there are two residential units into a pickup drop off dry cleaning laundry establishment there's not going to be any um, actual mechanical dry cleaning or chemicals or any of those kinds of things that go off it's strictly a counter business you know running one of those long things that has the rack on it that uh, delivers dry cleaning by alphabetical order or slip order however they do that um, so that's the proposal um, we think that this use kind of brings it more into conformity with the zoning or ordinance than it is presently um, it will reduce the, the the density on the unit because you're going to have an occupation on the ground floor that's open only open business hours it's not going to be any people there on Sunday it's not going to be people there late at night um, so you have a use that's probably less intense um, it's also going to allow my client to spend a substantial amount of money approving upgrading the property it will look an, a lot better than it does now and um, we think that's a good thing we think that that will help um, values of properties in the neighborhood um, we also think that um, it would really be a good it would be a good use um, for the area there's a very wide um, entrance to the property that doesn't appear to be controlled by any type of um, curb cuts um, parking uh, would be paved obviously we go to site plan review for this but again we think that this type of convenience would be a good thing for people who live in the area who are going down and commuting back and forth on on Exeter Road um, so as an overview that's what's proposed and um, I'll take any questions if you want to have interrupt me at any time if you have questions or I can go on to the criteria well, look, before we get to the criteria I guess the proposal would be after if this was approved would be two residential downstairs and one uh, commercial upstairs yes that's correct so you'd be going from a four unit to uh, basically two or three residential and one so you'd be going from four unit to a three unit right and and so when i said this because makes it more conforming <laughs> we're actually reducing the the uh, number of separate units on the property seems like there's another floor upstairs is that in the gable is is there in the triangle above above the ground floor is there is there occupancy or is there anything up above there is it just two, storage it seems to be two doors up top in the front of the gable land um he said there's not a there's not a unit up there now that's all a trust for system yeah i think that was oh, that a flat too that's right time. okay that up. Yeah. yeah i did watch and put up the trusses so there will be no access okay mr chairman i have a yes. question um, according to this memo, I guess this is from Dan, yeah, Dan Vincent, um, it's saying there's five units that exist there, but four in, are in con Four are within the uh, structure that's in discussion at this time. The uh, fifth unit is the uh, trailer that's located on the uh, property that's being occupied uh, at this time. So my determination would be that there's five residential units on the lot. And they're only supposed to have four? Well, I, I think uh, Mr. Radigan has acknowledged that there's actually five there. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if they take two units out and make it for the purpose of which the gentleman wants to do it, then that brings it into conformity? or No. no basically, the nonconformity they're requiring is a use conformity, mm -hmm. not a density conformity. Not a density. Okay. And so basically all they're asking for, and to me, the legality and non-legality of the fifth unit is basically out of our control. Is, and that's something to be handled between the uh, uh, assessor and the dam. As far as all we're concerned is whether 
if we approve this, we would be changing the four unit residential to two unit residential and one unit commercial, which is right. more in conformity than the four unit non-residential. So the action is bringing it more in conformity. Right. So that's basically what I said. Do you concur with that? Well, I think 7.02 indicates that the uh, residential density shall be one less because of the business. And if, however you want to look at it, if, if there's five on the lot, then the maximum residential density for it is four, and the one less would be three residential units and one commercial unit on the entire lot, which would be inclusive of the four residential units in the one building and the one uh, mobile home. So, so take by, by taking two residential units out and going with that commercial, that still leaves them two units within the structure and one mobile unit in the back, still in conformity of three residential units. Not, not in conformity, it's, it's existed, and this is something that is basically the planning boards going to have to get into. All we are being asked to tonight is to grant a use I understand variance. that, Mr. Chairman. However, there seems to be some discrepancy here. That's what I'm trying there to... There is. There is, but it's not uh, zoning board uh, affected. It's, it's planning board and uh, assessor affected as to whether the tax cards are right and whether... And, and that is not our right. daily work tax cards. So should that be corrected first before we proceed with this? No, I don't, that's got nothing to do with us, basically. I, I, the well, enforcement officer is not concurring with that. Oh, okay. So. And that's where I, I differ with that because I want to get a clear understanding. Well, if you read Section 7.02 of the Zoning Ordinance, it would tell you that the uh, maximum <laughs> residential density shall be one less with a commercial uh, mix, non-residential and business use. So if the maximum residential density for that particular lot is four and there's already five there, then I would think in order to meet the code, you would be one less than maximum residential density, which is the four, so you're one less, and the fifth is already over the residential which density. Which would appear to me they need to get that problem resolved before they go on to creating another situation. That would be my opinion as well. I don't know. To me, that is not a zoning board uh, jurisdictional problem. Then why do we have him here to, to say so? It's part of the oh. ordinance. It, it's not a zoning issue as far as to whether the tax card is correct or not. That is not our... Yeah, but I understand that, Mr. Chairman. However, how can we proceed to allow something that's currently not conforming but allow something else to come into it? That's my point. What we are doing is, is allowing something to be more conforming than what is there now. So should we have a motion to say that this should go back to wherever the issues are to get it resolved before they come to us? I don't think so, but that's up to you. I just... Well, no, I'm looking for guidance here. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I, I think to clarify for Dana would be that right now there's five existing residents on that. Whether or not there's an assessment card that makes it a legal four, a legal five is not our problem, but because of the fact that he is going to eliminate two residential units, that brings that five residential use down to three, which does make it more conforming in which, there's which no is question. What I just so therefore I think if we just proceed as as planned, I think are you in agreement, Dan? If the if the end result of the decision is three residential units of one business, I think that that's what the code is asking for, that it, the maximum residential density being four, four. and that if it's reduced to uh, three. three, then that does allow, but in this case, he'd be eliminating two residential units within the structure. Exactly. So it makes it more, so at right that now point it's, it would be code compliant. It would be. Which is what I said earlier. Yes. Better. Okay. Exactly. Right now. Right. Okay. Thank you. You all set? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't have the... <coughs> 
Do you have any of those forms that... Uh, Should be one at the back of... Uh, there you go, right in that section. You can have mine. Okay, the process that we will be using, we have been using, is we go over each variance criteria individually. We give you our presentation, we ask questions, we open a public hearing, we close the public hearing, we have a discussion, we find finding a fact, and whether it's met the criteria for that individual one, then we go on to the next one. Great. Okay? Yep. Um, I won't belabor the uh, materials that I've submitted in writing. I'll just go over them real briefly. The first criteria is the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. I think for the reasons that we've just had the discussion amongst the board, you have a legal nonconforming use, and we're bringing it into greater conformity with the present ordinance, and so I think that criteria is met. Um, applying the, the uh, simplex analysis, the zoning restriction as applied interferes with the landowner's reasonable use of the property considering the unique, unique setting of the property and its environment. The thing that's unique about this property that distinguishes it from others in the zone is, is that it has a legal nonconforming use of five units on the property. And our proposal um, will we'll bring it more into conformity. We think that really is what the purpose of the zoning ordinance is, is to create greater conformity. So we think that requirement uh, is met. The second part of that test is no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general purposes of zoning and the specific restriction on the property. Again, um, for the very same reason, the restriction on the property, um, if read strictly, is is that um, we wouldn't. We w yes. I think you're on number no, two. No, I think we're, 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 on we've one. we've gone by the variance. We're just going on the public interest one first. You've answered that. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, so, so basically, the first question is. The variance will not be contrary to public interest, and you've given the criteria for it. Where we'll next get into the hardship ones after that. Okay. Okay. Board have any questions into what Mr. Radigan no. brought up? Okay. If not, I'll open a public hearing. Does anybody in the public have any comments or questions as to whether this variance will be contrary to the public interest? I ask would you please come up, state your name, and. <coughs> Comments, please. Okay, so my name is Eric Longbottom. I live at 136 Exeter Road, which is in a butter to the property almost immediately across the street. Uh, we've lived in that house for 28 years now, and uh, one of the things that was said today really wasn't true, at least in 28 years. That's been an apartment building for that 28 years that I've been resident there. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, uh, what happened when the uh, zoning master plan was passed. Uh, I was around when that happened too when I was involved in it. And part of what the intent of the town was at that point in time was to put a residential corridor along Route 108 to prevent retail sprawl so that we wouldn't have congestion and gridlock all the way along that stretch of land which is comparable to what happened in Stratum. That's the only non-conforming piece along that entire residential corridor there. It's houses on our side, and if you look at it, it basically what this does is it interrupts the pattern of the well-being of the people in that neighborhood. At least uh, three abutters, including myself, and I have a list on the map that I could show you, and six other houses in that immediate area have done extensive renovations in the last five years. We spent ourselves about six times what we paid for the property renovating our residential property. All those investments were made in residential property. And opening this up, it's a big thing changing it to a service from an apartment building.
because what it's doing is it's changing the nature on that road. And we don't think it's in the best interest of the public to start having that kind of sprawl, residential sprawl down that road. And, and that's what's going to happen. I mean, if this one gets opened up, there's really no stopping someone else from coming in and doing the same thing. And with that, it's going to ruin the property values of all of us along that road and turn us again into a stratum where there's a lot of these single, you know, buildings that will have access and tie 108 up. There's no way to put a wider 108 in there. We went through this about, geez, I think it's almost 20 years ago when there was a proposed shopping center that you put in on the other side of that bridge. And we came up with the same issues then, that the sprawl that would come through there. And that's why I bring it up as the best interest of the public. Thank you. <coughs> have any other? Yes. Doreen Howard, 149 Exeter Road. Um, my property abuts Mr. Kim's in the back. I own nine acres. Let me give you a little background of that property. Let me give you a little background of that property. Um, my uh, father bought uh, his property in 1952. We moved there in 1954. At the time, Mr. Kim's property, 135 Exeter Road, was Tony's Pizza. Okay. Mr. Pinto owned that property. He had his pizza parlor in the top where he, Mr. Kim wants to put his um, um, laundry business. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pinto lived in the apartment next to it, and underneath they had other family members. Um, he built the three houses down from him on spec. Mr. Pinto built them. The first one, he, the one right next door, next door, which I, I, sorry, this gentleman in the second row just purchased a year ago uh, from Celia Illingsworth, uh, was built for Mr. Pinto and his wife, but she refused to live in it, so they, he went ahead and sold it on spec to Mrs. Illingsworth. The house next to it, 143, was originally um, built in 1955. Um, then the house next to that, uh, 147, was built in 1946. Uh, these three were spec houses that um, Mr. Pinto built. Um, the other piece of property which my father bought was from Elmer Clement, and we own nine acres. Across the street on the corner of um, Hersey Lane and 108, it was originally the Houle property which they sold to the Doles within the last seven or eight years. The Doles had two acres there which they subdivided about three years ago where their daughter and son-in-law live. They were able to subdivide into one half acre. The Kramer's property was originally built by Mr. Gamester in the late 50s. The house beside that, Scott Lambert's house, which was originally my uh, cousin, the Wilson's house, was built early 1950s. The house next to that, uh, Madeline Pelzer's house, was built in 1960. And the gentleman that just spoke he lives in what used to be the Wright's farmhouse. He lives on Wright's Corner, and that farmer owned all of that property. My point here is what I'm telling you, and then the Hartleys, have, they own the um, trailer next, their 131 Exeter Road, and the trailer is not in the back of the property. It's in the front. It's, it's just right next to the um, 135 um, in our particular zone. Um, you have to have a half an, half an acre to subdivide. So a question here is, is Mr. Kim planning on subdividing? He owns the property, but he doesn't own the mobile home. So the Hartleys have an interest in this also. Um, so, you know, um, 135, which Mr. Kim owns, um, I disagree with this nonconforming because it was the original um, uh, building there. So in essence, you might say all the other residents are nonconforming because it was the first one there. But this was before zoning. Now, as you've just heard, when the zoning came in, it had been turned into an apartment building, um, which is in the, um, you know, what the rest of the, the neighborhood is, is all about. Um, as far as the best interest, um, 
my kitchen window, I'm 150 feet back from the road, my kitchen window, uh, the addition we put on, um, I watch the traffic all day long. I mean, I don't hang out in my kitchen all day long, although I am a chef, so I do spend a lot of time there. Um, rush hour traffic starts at 5 in the morning and goes to about 9.30, and then it starts again somewhere around 3 o'clock in the afternoon and goes till 6.30 or 7. Now, when I work full time and I used a dry cleaner, I would drop off in the morning and pick up in the afternoon. Now, you've got somewhere between 12 and 15,000 people going on 108 every day. Uh, we're a pass-through. Um, trying to make a left-hand turn because most of the traffic in the morning goes south, okay? So if you stop at Mr. Kim's establishment to drop off your dry cleaning, you're going to then try to head out and make a left-hand turn onto 108, which is a very sharp curve. It's very hard to see anybody coming. It's a 40 mile an hour speed limit. They will not reduce the speed of the road. I know my father tried to have the state reduce it to 25 miles an hour, but they wouldn't do it. So they are not going to reduce the speed. So it's a dangerous curve. People are going to be trying to exit and make a left-hand turn. I know that when I'm trying to get out of my driveway, which has good sight, because when I put the addition on, we change the driveway so I have a better view. There are times where people have to stop and, who are kind enough to let me out in the morning. Trying to cross the road, you know, it's difficult. So um, in the public interest, I don't think it's a good thing because of the heavy volume of traffic. You're going to have accidents. And then in the wintertime, it, he, has, he has a big um, open area that I assume he's, he's saying that's going to be the parking lot. Well, you know, we had a mild winter, but when we have, a, have a, um, heavy snows, you're going to have snow piles, which makes it even harder to look and see. So as far as um, I think in the public interest, it's not a good thing. Thank you. Have any other comments from the public? <coughs> Chris, I'll have 139 Exeter Road. I'm located directly next door. Um, a lot of my concerns have already been addressed. Um, one that, in particular, is the um, the value um, traffic. Already, as um, today, the uh, the traffic in the morning, like she like she mentioned, is very very busy. Um, I'll sometimes I'll spend 10 minutes just trying to get out of my house. But that corner is very dangerous, very dangerous, especially um, in high amounts of traffic. Um, another thing I have to mention too is, um, you know, they're, they're looking to, to put a dry cleaner right directly next door to me, but, um, when two miles down the street that we already have a dry cleaner. Um, another thing also is in the, in the proposal that they showed us in the picture, it says that, um, it, to me, it looks like two storefronts and that, you know, I know it can happen, but. I mean, it kind of fooled me a little bit. But um, that was my other concern. Um, as for uh, value, I mean, I just purchased this, this house. Um, I'm putting a lot of work into it. Um, I don't see a commercial business increasing the value of my property whatsoever. You know, I've talked to plenty of other, um, other people in the area. I've talked to plenty of uh, real estate agents, and they all, they all agree with me. Um, and as for right now, um, Back to the traffic situation, if you look at my front yard, my front yard is like a triangle. Right now, from all the residents that live there, drive directly across the front of my yard. I can only imagine what it's going to be like if, there's a, if it's a business. Um, as for the mess, right now, the property is a disaster. I pick up trash all the time in my backyard. Um, I, really, I really can't see it. I mean, they never mow the lawn driveway's never plowed. I can only imagine what it will be like if it's a business. So there's a lot of improvement needed to, uh, to clean up the mess. Um, and as for that, that I, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to comment? We call the public hearing. Helena Hartley. I live in the mobile home. Thank and you. I'm concerned on how it's zoned because I'm worried about where the mobile home is going. 
It's been there for years. It's grandfathered in. Nobody will answer any of our questions. And I'd like to know what's going on, plus the concern of the traffic and all. Thank you. What are the concerns? What? What are the concerns? Earth? Yeah. Just want to know what's going to happen. It's not our. No, you indicated you had concerns, plus your concern about the traffic. Well, I'm concerned with, as everyone else is. Oh, concerned. same issues, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have any other comments? Close the public hearing. Board have any <coughs> comments or questions? Yes, I do. <coughs> uh, my first one would be, whenever we have these discussions, um, should we have a sense of what something, not just this, but other issues relating to uh, make a change to the values of the property? That, that, that is the fifth criteria that we're okay, going so to So we're going to discuss it in that out. area. Right. Okay. Right now we're just <coughs> whether this is a public interest, we'll get into the hardship issues, okay. the diminution of value, all the other issues <coughs> a lot of people went into other issues, but basically okay. some of them are Is it appropriate to bring up one of them uh, made a comment about the um, you allow it to come in, you're opening it up to become uh, he, yeah. Well, ba basically, your variance is individual item by right. item. It's I understand a, that. Yeah. However, um, I, I'm, I'm concerned here is, I had not thought about this until it was just brought up, is we all know what happened on from um, Irving Gas Station forward, that one house was sold, which was for the McDonald location. Once that property was sold, then we started getting a massive amount of commercial development in that area. So when you look at that, I, you have to be concerned, I think, well, are we permitting this or, or are we at the beginning to allow this to happen, such as what happened in Stratum and what happened in Newmarket. So, you know, yeah. I hadn't well, thought about that until just now. Yeah, the only thing from Irving down was the B1 zone. Okay. Therefore, it was an allowed use. And this used to be, the B1 zone used to be all the way up through there. How far did it go at one time? It went all the way to the, the golf course. Golf course, right? Yeah. That was B1 zone, and the last change seven or eight years ago, they took from just beyond Irving's to the industrial park, I think, and changed that back from uh, the B1 to an R2, and an R2 which was to restrict uh, development as much as possible. It was R2 is a transition zone between your residential zone and your business zone. So usually you allow some but not too much uh, commercial use in your R2 zone. It's different than the R1 zone where you know, it's uh, strictly residential. R2 zone is a transition zone between your business zone which starts right. yeah. curving yeah. and I, I can understand that, but again, are we going to be setting a precedent by allowing one and then others are going to start coming in? However, can we really stop that because it is a transitional zone? Yeah, well, that's the thing. The way it's, it's a zone now, it's the R2, it's not R1, so it is allowed if it meets the criteria. I'm not basically allowed, it's, it can be allowed because of the R2. Mr. Chair? Um, I do have a question too to the applicant uh, like that gentleman stated it shows on the for the future drawing it shows two doors and two signs are you planning on putting two businesses there or one I think it's the pleasant plan is simply to put a single business up in that top floor and to dedicate that space to a service use which would be in this instance it would be the uh, dry cleaning present plan that's the key well I, I guess before we move on to the second criteria, it's certainly our obligation to convince you that there's something special about this property that is different from the other properties in the zone so that you don't have the fear that that gentleman raised about there being a multiplicity of additional applications trying to change the character of the neighborhood. Um, I think the key is simply that unlike the other houses, which were all described as single family houses, this is a house which ha this is a property that has a a multiple units on it. The other houses, other lots only have single family houses on them. 
we've got five units on this property and we're trying to bring the number down it, but we want the number to work economically. I mean, my client is a businessman. He's looking at a piece of property that acknowledged has not been maintained over the years. And we understand that there may be some complaints about how it's being maintained. And we're trying to make this work economically in a better way. It'll be better for the neighborhood because the property is going to be upgraded. The lot will be paved. Um, the facade of the building will be done, redone. It will look much more attractive. It has to look attractive, quite frankly, to attract customers who will think that this is a good place to trust your dry cleaning and laundry with. So we think in the end result, this will be um, a better issue. And I'm not seeking to minimize the traffic concerns that have been addressed. Just because you give a use variance doesn't mean that we're relieved to have to go into site plan. To, to address safety concerns. And if we can't meet safe site distance, if we can't meet you know parking space regulations, if we can't meet snow storage regulations and all those types of things, this, the planning board will say you can't have a use here. And I, I think that these are legitimate concerns that have been addressed and there's a forum for addressing them and that's the planning board. And, and if the board grants this uh, use variance, we would invite people to come and have input to the planning board to go over those issues. And that's our responsibility and we commit to that to executing that responsibility. Um, so I, I think that the key is is that this is a legal non-conforming use on the property. It's got five units and we're seeking to take it down to three residential units and one commercial use up on the top floor. And that's the proposal and we think in the long run that will result in a much more attractive property um, and it will result in a property that in the long term has less impacts than a neighborhood. But, I'll, but, I'll, but you need to be convinced of that at the end of the evening, and we understand that. Um, would you like me to proceed to the? No, no, but add the way we work, this is okay. now okay. we're going to close the public hearing. We'll have a discussions. We'll have a finding of facts. And then we'll see whether or not the criteria has been met. Then we'll go to the next one. Whether it's met or not, it's, uh, we'll go through all five of them anyways. So then if it comes back for a rehearing or appeal, then it'll only be appealing the issues that weren't found to be uh, satisfied rather than all five of them. Okay? Are, are we open again? I mean... The, yeah, we haven't make, closed the public okay. hearing yet. If you wish to make... Yeah, I just want to make a comment about what was said. Uh, the applicant seems to keep saying that this is going to make it better for the neighborhood. The neighborhood, you know... It's going to be better for the neighborhood. It's going to look better. It's better all the way around for the people that live there. You've heard from the abutters, and some more people are sitting here that I just don't think are comfortable coming up and speaking, but there's not one abutter or person that lives in that zone that shares that feeling, and we're the ones that have to live with it. So I think, you know, for someone to stay up, come up here and state that it's going to make the neighborhood better is absurd when everybody in the neighborhood is saying it's going to make it worse. Thank you. I have one other question. Can you clarify for me, is there two trailers there or one trailer? And that one trailer is where those people live, but it's not part of his property, right? Or am I getting this wrong? I understand it is part of, it's on that same lot, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's on the same lot. I believe so, that it's on the same lot that Mr. Kim does not own the mobile home. Oh, so the mobile home is owned separately, but the land that they get it on, they may be renting it or there's an arrangement there. Correct. That's correct. Just like someone had a, yeah. before zoning, they had two, I two buildings that. on a lot. They're allowed to continue with two buildings on a lot, but uh, even though it doesn't come I was under the impression zone. that there was a trailer behind the building. That's not, that's on what we side. said. On the it's side. On the side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? If not, I'll close the public comment section. There'll be discussion amongst the board members. I think from the testimony, to the testimony we heard, the finding of facts is it will be contrary to the public interest for the people that are in that area, and that that would be my opinion. I would concur with that. What what is the finding of fact? I mean, what what fi what makes it contrary to the public interest? I guess is because of be because of the testimony the, the te testimony we heard from the abutters. And they're the ones that have to live with it, not you or I. 
I, I, okay. Let me back. That, that really, we, sh we should have a particular finding of either uh, it doesn't conform with the neighborhood or well, something to that effect. Well, it doesn't conform with the neighborhood, <coughs> definitely uh. not. You need a motion on that? No, no actually, we, we find a mm -hmm. finding of fact, and then Discretion. we make a motion as to whether or not the variance will be contrary or not to the public interest. I guess the, the other thing I think we should be uh, we should be looking at is we're contrary to public interest. Is this property going to be better with five residential units rather than three residentials and one commercial? I guess you you have. Uh, we're not allowed to discuss anything in the way of traffic problems because that's at the planning board issue. Right, right, right. That's the planning. But yeah, you're right. Right. They brought it up, but it and it is a problem. And right. if it ever did go to the planning board, the planning board right. would have to. Uh, uh, Any other discussion on the board? Does this mean we cannot speak about Pardon? traffic? Yeah. I guess you could bring it up if you think that this is going to increase the traffic so that there would be more well, traffic. Okay, then I would like to address that situation. Okay. To begin with, that's a very hazardous part of the road. Mm -hmm. And with all the uh, additional commuting on it, I find that between 7 and 8 o'clock in the morning, you cannot drive 40 miles an hour on that road. It just, the traffic's not moving that fast. It's more like 30 miles an hour. So here we are introducing something that uh, is certainly going to <clears throat> bring in more traffic than five units would, five living units. I, and, and that is a good point as to whether or not it would uh, it, it you know, just be would in the public interest. The problem of, of 108, and the traffic is not going to go away on 108. Is that also part of a curve? Yes, mm -hmm. it's going to coming off the, yeah, yeah, coming coming off the curve. Sight view would be a problem too. Okay. Now, that, that's but, not our issue. That's not our issue. No. Now, we, the sight curve, whatever that is would be a planning board issue. Do they have any other finding of facts? That, uh, I, I think, I think increased traffic would be a uh, They definitely win. Okay, I guess we have the two findings of fact. Now the, we need a, mo a motion as to whether or not the variance will be in the would be contrary to the public interest. It's got to be a positive motion, not a negative motion. I'll make a motion that the uh, grant and the variance will be contrary to the public interest. From the testimon testimon testimony we heard from the abutters and the traffic that may increase due to it. I'll second that motion.
Discussion on the motion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye and raising your right hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the second item for variance is whether special conditions exist such that literal enforcement of the ordinance results in unnecessary hardship. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes. Addressing the... Uh, First item would be the zoning restriction. We're on a simplex analysis because this is a uh, use variance, not a area variance. Therefore, we will go through the three criteria for the simplex variance. First criteria being the zoning restriction has applied interferes with the landowner's reasonable use of the property, considering the unique setting of the property and its environment. Um, briefly, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, as we discussed before, I think the key characteristic about this property that distinguishes it from others in the zone is that there are the five nonconforming legal residential uses on the property, and this proposal would be to reduce that number uh, to three with a also having a commercial use as well. Um, given the fact that the property uh, has before it an ample space for parking um, and that the building lends itself to this use, we would suggest that this criteria has been met. Thank you. More than any questions? We'll open a public hearing as to whether the zoning restriction has applied interferes with the landowner's reasonable use of the property considering the unique setting of the property and its environment. Yes. Eric Longbottom again. Uh, part of uh, what I have to say here, I guess, is that I can't see how the applicant has a hardship when the applicant just brought, bought the property. If the applicant had this property for a long period of time and now had a hardship of not being able to utilize it the way it was, that's fine. But he came into this with his eyes wide open. Obviously, he's run, in other places, dry cleaning businesses, from what I understand at least. So I think it was bought with the intent of doing this from the beginning. So how that can be a hardship when you come into knowing what the zoning is there, knowing what the building is, what shape it's in, and then try to change the use after the fact. So I guess that's my point. And you know, I, again, there's a dry cleaner that's a 1.1 mile down the road, which is in a properly zoned building, which is that shell station uh, down in, uh, in, in Newfields. So there is one immediately on that road further down anyway. Thank you. Yes. Doreen Howard, 149 Exeter Road. Um, I don't believe a hardship exists for the usage of the property. Mr. Kim bought it last July, and at the time, uh, I believe all the units were rented. If he's only concerned about conforming to the code, he can just take one of the apartments and make it into a larger apartment, therefore conforming. Um, there was a usage. He could still use it. He could still be within code. He doesn't have to turn it into a dry cleaner. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments in public? Not. I'll close the public hearing. Discussion on the board. In my opinion, as far as this one goes, it, it would be a reasonable use of the property, considering, except for the fact that it's where it is. But the, I mean, it has been a business. There's plenty of parking. There's plenty of visibility. So it, it would be a reasonable use of it other than the fact of, of, of where it is. So I guess I would think that there, uh, it is a reasonable use of the property and it is a unique setting of the property, but the comments? Are we not going back to the same issue as number one, which is a, a problem? Uh, no, 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 no. no. Okay. we've got to, we got to, 
Eat I mean, I would agree. I, I, I see it as a dry cleaner. It's probably one of the best uses than to see a restaurant or a general store. Or something will give a, a much higher volume of traffic. Now, we've got to go each one of these criteria individual, and you, you can't use one previous criteria to justify right. another one. You, we've got to go in if, if they satisfy four out of the five, you still deny the variance. But it's, uh, we have to take each one individually, then the applicant, if one of the appeals, he appeals whatever criteria that uh, wasn't met. That's the way the Supreme Court wants us to do this. Have any other comments on it? Yes. Um, I, I feel they, they have reasonable use now with the five rents they have there. Uh, the unique setting of the property in its environment, it's in, if it was in a different zone, if, if it wasn't as densely residential as it was, if the homes weren't so close together that they would be adversely impacted by this, um, I, I think because of the R2 zone, it's just too densely populated to, to support something like this into that type of completely, re you know, all that residential there. Yep. Have any other comments? Well, in, in the R2 zone, that's a transition zone. Yeah. And it, it, it's allowable in it. Is it right or is it wrong? It's, it's still allowable. Mm. Any other discussion? Okay, we first, next. Did I close the public hearing? Yeah, you did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, a finding of fact. Well, I'll make a finding of fact due to the unique setting of the property. <coughs> uh, the zoning restriction as applied interferes with the landlord's reasonable use of the property. Therefore, I would grant that we approve it. Can you repeat that? I'm saying, due to the unique setting of the property, yeah. the zoning restriction as applied interferes with the landowner's reasonable okay. use of the property, and therefore, I think we should right. approve it. Okay. Have any other findings of fact? motion that was the motion I gave I think you need now, it's going to be different that that's the reason for a motion but now we have to have a motion and a second would it, would it be appropriate to state given the historical use of this property and its unique characteristics it would be it would not be unnecessary unreasonable rather to de deny the applicant use of this property for a service purpose Right, clean up. That would be my motion. I'll okay. second that. Could you repeat that one more time, please? Sure. It's actually in, if you go into uh, Section A, append uh, applicant seeking use variance simplex analysis, um, one, it's the very last sentence. Given the historical use of this property and its unique, and unique characteristics, it would be reasonable to allow the applicant's use of this property for a service purpose dry cleaner. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and Richard seconded it? Yeah. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion, sing five, say nine, raise your right hand. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. 
Okay, the next, the next uh, hardship criteria on a simplex analysis, no fair and substantial relation exists between the general purposes of the zoning ordinance and the specific restriction on the property. Mr. Chairman, the R2 district allows for a greater mix of uses. Um, we would suggest that both by reducing the uh, number of units on the property and uh, suggesting this interme intermediary type transitional use that the board has already discussed that um, to restrict this so as to prohibit this use um, interferes, uh, it does not create a substantial relationship between the general purposes of zoning and the restriction on the property and therefore um, this criteria is satisfied. Thank you. Open a public hearing on whether there's no fair substantial relationship between the general purpose of zoning ordinance and the specific restriction on the property. Okay. The same parade. Uh, Eric Longbottom again. I go back to what I mentioned in the first case, which is when the uh, master plan was put in. It, that R2 zone was specifically put in that corridor there to stop commercial development there. And again, this is a commercial development. That's why it's so much different than an apartment building being there. You don't hear any of us complaining about the apartment building being there. We're complaining about the addition of a commercial piece of property in the middle of this. And there is no other way to look at it. That is not in the best interest and anybody who is involved in that discussion that we had during that, because I was one of the ones who brought that up during the discussion of the master plan, was to, again, ensure the fact that we could stay there and we could maintain that as a residential neighborhood. Otherwise, I wouldn't, and I don't think a lot of other people would have made the investments in their property to make the neighborhood better and stay there. Thank you. Doreen Howard, 149 Exeter Road. After I received my certified letter about the, for the abutters for this particular um, matter, I went to see Andy, and I apologize. I'm bad with names. I don't remember his last name, but the tax assessor. And we specifically discussed this property. And I told him the background of the property, like I told you. And I realized in the second part, you discussed about the historical use of the property. Well, when I discussed that with Andy, he said that historical use was abandoned and it's no longer relevant. So even the fact that it was originally a commercial property before you had zoning, the use of it as a commercial property was abandoned and it shouldn't be considered. Thank you. Anyone else have comments on it? Not a closed public hearing. I guess the, the question is what are the general purposes of zoning ordinance? And I, the restriction on the property is no commercial uses allowed. That's the restriction. And, but you have the R2 zone that is a transition zone. I guess that's the, the difference between the R1 and the R2 zone. That there are commercial use is allowed in. I have a question on that, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, perhaps the code enforcement officer can um, define this for me. Transitional zone. Transitional means to me, if I got it right, it's just for a period of time and then you kind of move on to something else. How does transitional work here? I've asked myself that same question. And I think you have to first decide whether your tra the transition is from R1 to R2 to a business zone, for instance, or if you're looking at it as a transition from business back the other way through the residential. And depending on which way you look forward on that or backwards on that, I think at that point you can make what is the transition. But I think that the permitted uses speak somewhat about that because it does give you what is permitted and what is not permitted within the zone. And if you look at the table of permitted uses, you'll see where uh, the golf course is a permitted use, 
for I've yet to receive this. I need this. I've got a copy right here I can uh, pass over to you. Okay. And if you look at the permitted uses, you'll see. Is this one of those? That is. Hmm. Thank you. You'll see that here is the uh, R1 to the R2 zone. Yeah. And you'll see here that, for instance, here in the R2 nursing home is permitted in R2. Uh, family is uh, permitted in R1, but not in R2. Here's another permitted in R2, but not in R1, which yeah. is the family, daycare. family child daycare. Okay. Right. So those are some of the differences. And actually, we have more uses in the R1 zone than we do in the R2 zone, because we, here we have Virtual three, which is the, well, I guess the conference center, indoor, outdoor recreation, or the golf that's course, where they're pre-existing. So I would suppose that that's probably why they're inclusive in so the R1 a, a zone. So a dry cleaner itself is not permissible? Is that, that would, what you're saying? That would be considered Should to be, be a service. A service, okay. Which is not permitted either in the R1 or the R2. It is certainly permitted in the uh, business districts. And that's what we're talking about is R1 and R2. Correct. We're, we're R2. talking the R2, 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 right. The R2. Yeah. R2. So we're moving from B1. It's only B1. permitted with a variance. With a variance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So so that's that's my whole problem. And I think that's what the right public's here. addressing. Uh, if we allow that, then we're going to start allowing it to happen two. more and more frequently. My other question is also, when people come in for variances, uh, before people purchase properties, do they come in and ask specifically? Um, in this case, this gentleman, Mr. Kim, come in and ask, would this be permissible before I buy the property? or? I'm not, uh, I did not meet with him, but it doesn't mean that he didn't meet with uh, Somebody else. Andy Blaze or others. But I see very few realtors come in and look at the, uh, or per prospective buyers come in and look at the zoning files. Well, clearly here, it, it's, yeah, it does not list it, so. No, right. and, and so actually, that's allow right that. here. Right. Yeah, so that's, and that, that's right. the reason right. for right. variances. Right. If, if it was allowed, they wouldn't even be here. Right. They'd exactly. go directly to site plan. Mm. And this is okay. whether... That's what the purpose of the zoning board is, is to uh, make reasonable uses of property mm -hmm. that don't necessarily conform to it. Yeah, but it No, I don't. Yeah. Let's, let me see that. I've been trying to get that yeah, now for about three meetings, and I haven't gotten it yet. So you if you're listening to You don't have the zoning it. regs? Why don't you give this whole package of the uh, master plan? Well, I have the master plan. 2001, is that the one? Thank you. Do those folks have it? It took a copy off the top. I thought they were all the same. I have a whole set. I have a whole set. I think he's, yeah. he has it as well. He yeah, has all the stand. Yeah. Is that the one? Oh, wait. No, I don't have the master. You don't have the master plan? No, that's not in here. You not have in this that. one, anyways. So. And I only oh, have you said the second one. I took I the third one. No. I, basically, in the zoning, it says the R2 is if the purpose of this district shall be to provide for an area of transition between the low density R1 residential districts and the more in, intensely developed districts in and around the village area. It is intended that high quality neighborhoods with a greater density and a greater mix of uses than would be permitted in the R1 residential shall be accommodated. So basically, it in the R2, instead of having two acre zonings, mm -hmm. I think it's a quarter acre. Yeah. Goes through, and, and it's a lot of different, uh, greater mix of uses, I guess that's the. I guess the question we're asking here is whether there is a substantial relationship between the general purpose of the zoning ordinance and the specific restriction on his property. The specific restriction is a use restriction and the general purpose of the zoning ordinance is just what we read there for the R2 zone. Chairman? Yes. On the uh, table of permitted, permitted uses, under service, there is no check mark under 
R1 or R2. Right. Mm -hmm. That's because it's not permitted by right. That is, it's, it's not permitted by right by the regulations. In order to get permitted, you have to either go to a variance, a special exception, or whatever. And that's what the purpose that's why we're of, here. of the zoning board is, is to uh, grant exceptions if they meet the criteria. Or I mean, if, if you just stay with that, you wouldn't need a zoning board. You just, they would go to Dan and he'd say, oh, it's permitted, go, almost not permitted, goodbye. And the purpose of a zoning board is to see if the criteria is met to grant these variances. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're going through the various criteria that we have to find are met in order to grant these variances. No zoning is allowed in the state of New Hampshire without a zoning board of adjustment that can grant variances when they, the criteria is met. Okay, so basically uh, we are, have to want a finding of fact as to whether there is a substantial, transubstantial relation between the purposes, general purpose of zoning audit and a specific restriction on the property. A lot of these things interact with each other, which you'll find uh, mm. is sometimes there. Uh, very familiar. The same argument uh, applies in one case and as in another case. Mm Finding of fact. Well, the finding of fact is that uh, the, the zoning ordinance of uh, 209A, R2 district, uh, permits the uh, us uh, approving a dry cleaning in that area through variance. Uh, he, he's looking at the uh, right here, right here, right? uses of the R2 district. Okay. I do. Right yeah, it's the same that I'm looking at, right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. What section is that, Mr. Schultz? R2. Page twenty three. Page twenty three. That's not it. If I read it right, it says it is intended that high quality neighborhoods with a greater density and greater mix of uses that then would be permitted in the R1 residential district shall be accommodated. But B, permit uses, uses permitted by right of list in the table of permitted uses. Well, that's not even in there. That's why they're asking for a I variance. Know. So, I mean, if we were, we need a word somehow. But it has to be on the positive side, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right. The, the, the find, well, the motion is the part. The finding of fact is mm. either we f have a finding that, no we're, no, we're on item two here. No fair and substantial relation exists between the general purpose of zoning on it and the specific restriction on the property. I guess the, I'd say what the general purpose of zoning is and the restriction on the property is that a commercial use is not allowed. 
and the general purpose of this R2 district is just what you've read there, that there is a greater allowed uses in the R2 district and lower densities which are allowed in the R2 district. Can Mr. Vincent give us an example of going forward or going using that um, the criteria there of um, transitional? Can you give me an example of what how you see that might help us to better understand how we could that would be applied? I guess through that transitional use, anything that is not permitted that's approved by the board that meets the criteria would be that mix of uses. So if, if the board felt that the criteria was met, then either, uh, either way you looked at it, whether you're going from business to a residential, that increase in uses would be involved in the zone that we're discussing here. But I, I guess what I'm saying is when something is, what was the word I used before? It's not coming to me right now. Um, transitional. The transitional aspect of the zone itself? Yeah. Give us an example of what something would be as a transitional thing. When you said earlier you can use it forward or you can use it backwards. Th this use, if it met the criteria, would be one of those transitional uses. Right. Where it doesn't, so. Yeah, basically, I think general purpose zoning on specific restriction you have to take into account the amount of impact you would have. No, if you had 200 uh, customers a day versus 10 customers a day, that would uh, make it more or less. And I guess that's what we have. Well, he's indicating here approximately 30 customers. Can I ask how that's based on? Where do you get that trigger, 30? sense of other businesses he operates in the size of new market this estimate of best estimate of how many customers you you're waiting for a motion right no I'm waiting for finding a fact and then we'll go through the motion I, I can't think of how to even begin to word something like that Richard, you're pretty good at that. Yeah, well, I'm not that good at that. But I, <laughs> I, I think the finding of fact is that they're in an R2 zone, which is permitted with a variance. That's the finding of fact. Now, is it, is it fair and substantial relationship exist? Probably yes, for, this, for the area it's in. So I would think the finding is fact is we've got to look at the 209A. I, and I think that the fact would allow it. I, I guess that it is how much impact is this going to have on this uh, residential? The general purpose of the zoning ordinance is basically <coughs> saying that where this zone is a lot more, more dense use, more. Uh, varied uses and whether that correlates to the proposal we have before us about the use, the specific use, which is the uh, dry cleaner, are they compatible? And none of us here um, are engineers well, to make that I, I don't believe it's going to increase the traffic much more than what it is because the people are probably going to drop them clothes off on their way to work and pick them up on the way back. They're not going out of their way to leave them there and go back home. That, that's what I think. People are going but to they'll be, be making stops and crossing. That's the, the key. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's, the, that's the key. Yeah, that's the key. Yeah. Which is, which is in my mind, well, two yeah. issues. That's one of them. And the other one is it's no, different, area where it's no different than going into Irving's or Brooks or. Irving, you don't have a curve. Yeah. Don't have what? A curve. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's... Is it, is it appropriate for us as a board to ask 
our co enforcement officer. No, he can't make decisions for no, us. I'm not asking him to make right. a decision, yep. but render an opinion when it came to you. What are your thoughts on this? Because obviously, well, I, I think uh, I think we've had this okay. this question before, and we're going to have to go back to the attorney as to at what point the discussion between the board members is supposed to be only between the board members, and you know, once we close the public hearing, <coughs> close public input, general input, we're going to have to get that resolved because we've had three different instances when we've mm -hmm. had objections from the attorneys about the code enforcement officer being going into the deliberative session between the board members and we're going to have to get that resolved. I think now. we should do that because otherwise I, I don't see the purpose of him being here. Well, no, I, I don't agree with that. He mm -hmm. should be given his information as what his thoughts are in the beginning as with all the rest of the input, why they're here and what, it, but he shouldn't be, in my opinion, involved in the, any discussions between the various board members. And even the town attorney had a question about that way back when we had one of the can we, appeals. Can we so get a legal opinion on that? We're going to get right. one, yes. All right. okay. If I can just explain something, mm -hmm. please. I'm not here as your code enforcement officer or building official. I'm here as your zoning administrator. Right. Okay. The purpose of the zoning administrator is to provide you information in order to come to a decision relative to those documents, such as the master plan, the zoning ordinance, or uh, any other document that would be of uh, interest to you. Well, would you not be in a position of saying um, these are the facts, this is why you think it should not be, or this is why you think it would be okay? No, the finding of facts should be by the board members. Yeah. The finding of facts should be by the board members. And the motion should be by the board members. Okay, and we are all volunteers, that's my point. So we don't have yeah. the expertise in that area. That's my concern. Right. Well, we have somebody here yeah. who yeah. has but that. That's but if we can't point. have him give right. us the finding of facts, and we can't right. have No, him. no, I'm not suggesting he give the finding of facts. Okay. But. I think to, to bring to you, if there's an error that might be made on the board or if there might be something that's overlooked within the ordinance, Okay. I would think that would be uh, absolutely for me to absolutely. Bring to you. absolutely. Yeah, I would not suggest or encourage to give um, what Mr. Fagan said there mm -hmm. uh, facts. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, we, we have to. It's the board's mm -hmm. duties to have the findings as facts, and it's the board's duties to, uh, you know, find whether the uh, criteria for granting of the variances has been met. And, and in this case, to answer your question, I guess the only thing that I would bring out to you is that the R2 district does say that the purpose of that district is to is that high quality neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So I guess you would have to ask yourself that question. Does a uh, business service business such as being proposed provide for a high quality neighborhood? So we're still waiting for Finding a fact. Right. So we're going to define finding a fact, then we're going to have to make go with a motion on it. I told you, 8.30. <laughs> so what happens if we don't come up with one? We, we have to. We have to. It's not a question of we have to answer these criteria so that the applicant can see whether he wants to move forward or not on this. Yes. I think I can help you out. If you read what the purposes of this district are. Yeah, and that's what we've been reading. Yeah, just read it out loud yeah. and then ask yourself, does this use, is there a relationship between this use, this right. use and the general purposes? And if, if you think that this use falls within it, then it satisfies it. If it falls without it, then it doesn't satisfy it. And you've heard input from the public on that. and. Um, so I, I would just read those sections. Dan mentioned it's high quality of the neighborhoods. There's a couple other things. Yeah. And it either. And, either and, this and we've read it about five it times. Is. Right, right. So just say it is. In the you, but I'm trying to help you with the finding of fact. Yeah. So you say, okay, I've heard those criteria. Let's apply it to the property. Does this right. meet those? Those? And so therefore, if it meets it, there's no fair and substantial relationship. If it doesn't meet it, then, then there. Well, I think we all understand that. I think what we're looking for is the correct verbiage to put it out there so we can get a vote on it. I, I, would, I would start by saying that 
the general purposes are this, and this does or doesn't meet it. Now, I think that'll be real clear if you do right. that. I mean, and that's what we've been talking about for 20 minutes. Oh, I know. It's the Supreme Court didn't make this easy for zoning. No, they sure didn't. What it, Richie? Mm. Yes. Um, I, I, I mean, the <clears throat> the last sentence to me is contrary to the first. Uh, the purpose of this district shall be to provide for an area a transition between low density R1 in the more intensely developed districts in and around the village. So you have your low density of R1. It's it's a lot more rural. There's more space. Uh, it's larger acreage, two acres, 200 foot frontage. Yeah. In the, in the village is a lot denser. You have your M1, your M2 zones. You have place for businesses there. This, to me, states it's, it's a transitional area. It's highly dense. It's intensely developed districts between the two as far as density goes. You've, go, you've gone from two-acre uh, lots in the R1 zone to quarter-acre lots in the R2 zone. Right. And the R2 zone is intended for transitional between the highly developed uh, mill area in the downtown village area and the very rural. And it says uh, provide an area between low density and residential district. Uh, it is intended that high quality neighborhoods. And I think that's what it should stay, a high quality neighborhood as a transitional area between the very rural area and the highly populated. That's my interpretation of purpose. And, and I, I, I think the planning board has to work in that last sentence because there's actually nine uh, 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 table of uh, permitted uses by right for R1, or do I have that just the opposite? There's actually the nine one. uses in the R1 and there's only seven uses in the R2. It's a sort of contrary. Mm -hmm. So it's very contrary, and it, it, it's extremely contrary to the first part, which I think uh, goes more with the master plan than the second part does. And we, we do have to follow the criteria set in our book. Um, the Board of Adjustment in New Hampshire, as of January 2006, states that we are to adhere to the master plan. And because you use that as a guide, and well, see, I don't, okay. it is extremely contrary. The second part is extremely contrary to the first, and I think the purpose in, for that area is for a transition, not to include a service or a commercial area. That's my interpretation of that. Right. I guess the, the other thing that you have to take in effect is to how many where areas are commercial in that area also to see if there is, because a lot of them will. I mean, I, I realized a while back we did allow a beauty parlor, I guess, in this, in this zone. And uh, we do have the industrial park in this area. We have the, the uh, storage buildings. The storage in the same area. So it, it's. Uh, are you going to be overwhelming uh, an, an area of residential homes with additional? Okay, we, we need to get the verbiage for finding a fact. So right, you come up this on. Otherwise, we're going to be here day and night. Right. Uh, the restric specific restriction is that com no commercial use. The general purpose of the owning audit is it's a transitional area. Okay, now does that commercial use uh, conflict with the general purposes of the uh, R2 zone, the transition zone. Only in the fact that it's, it's not, per uh, the table, a permitted use. So, and that's why we're here. Yeah. So I, would say I, I guess it the, does the question is, are we ever going to allow any variances, period? that are, don't meet our zoning regulations. 
I mean, if you go to hey, well, that certainly is an option for the board to look at. I mean, I'm not saying in every case we would, but uh, we 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 well, that's a difficult one, I guess. I guess we're going to find this in court if we do it. Yeah. Generally, it's uh, either way. We, we yeah, right, either way. How are you doing on the mm -hmm. perfect average? I thought I had it all said before, and Leo said I didn't, but... What did I say you didn't? <laughs> <laughs> Your statement was that there, you f said there was no transportation between the general purpose of zoning and a specific restriction. That's what you said. Yeah. Your, your finding of fact is that there was no uh, substantial relationship. Do you want to go on that and we'll vote it? Yeah. Okay. The finding of fact then is that, as he said earlier, half hour ago, <laughs> there's no fair and substantial relation that exists between the general purposes of zoning and the specific general purposes of zoning, which is the transitional zone and the specific restriction of commercial use on this property. Is that basically what you said? Yeah. Okay. If we agree that finding a fact, we then may go with a motion. So moved. Motion to. Uh, I'll second that motion. Okay. So the motion is that there is no fair and substantial relation exists between the purposes of the zoning ordinance and a specific commercial district on the property. I'm not saying I agree or disagree. I'm just seconding the motion. Right. Right. Well, you're making a motion right now. No, I'm seconding his. No, no. The he finding of fact is not a motion. Oh, 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 oh. Finding of fact is I a. You were coming a the finding of okay. fact is a reason on which you're supposed to base okay. your motion. I agree. Okay. Sorry, misunderstood hmm? that. Now you made the motion. If he did, I'll second it. Could you just repeat the motion one more time, Leo? The motion is that there is no fair and substantial relationship between transitional use of zoning ordinance and, and the commercial restriction on the property. That's a motion by Richard. Do we have a second? I'll second I mean, it. You just, you just said Dana made the motion and Richard said No, no. Dana made the motion of the finding of fact. Okay. Yeah. And Richard made the motion of of the uh, that there is no fail, and I second in the motion. Any discussion on a motion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Raise your right hand. Aye. 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 Opposed. Was that five zero? Oh, you're opposed. He's opposed. And you're opposed. Okay. Thank you. Could you explain what that means? Does that mean that, that you granted the variance on that or you didn't know that? We, we find in that, in this instance, that the board found that there was a fair and set, substantial relationship. Therefore, the criteria of two has been met. We're now going to criteria number three. I'm out here tonight sometime. The third criteria, wait a minute, I gotta finish this up here so I get, why don't, the third criteria, the variance would not injure the public or private rights of others. I'll open it. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, um, I think given the property um, and the proposed use, we don't believe that there are any public or private rights that would be injured by granting this variance. Thank you. We'll open a public hearing as to whether the variance would not enter the public or private rights of others. Yes? I, I just got to say one thing. I mean, obviously, Eric Longbottom again. The, the problem that I've got with this proceeding is that I don't think anybody's listening to a butters. We're the ones that are affected by this. This map that I colored in is the lot map around there that shows the substantial investment that people made around that property. 
If this is a transitional area, it's not going at the end where it goes into the town. It's going smack in the middle of these people that put the investment in it. And I, I just don't understand the discussion that goes on when a service, even in a B2 and a B3 zone, it's not acceptable. It's only acceptable by right in a B1. And yet we're putting it in the middle of a residential zone. Now, if that doesn't violate private rights, I don't know what does. Probably doesn't, but it doesn't seem to make any effect anyway. Thank you. You have a say. Doreen Howard, 149 Exeter Road. As I stated before, I abut Mr. Lee on the back of the property. Also, when I moved back to town, I allowed the state to put water drainage onto my property. It no longer just flows from in front of my property, which the state was only supposed to allow no further development. But of course, you know, you, you allow it and it just happens because um, the house across the street that was newly put up, they changed the configuration, added a new driveway. Uh, right now it's, it's porous, but they plan on hard topping it. During the 70 year flood, of course, you know, I get more water and I get more water coming down all the time. Now they propose to pave this. That makes more impervious, more water running down, more oil, gas, whatever that comes off vehicles that comes running down. You know, I have nine acres of property there. I'm going to end up with having things in the back that are full of all kinds of, of carcinogens, whatever. You know, the more we pave, the more that ends down on my property. And, you know, I find that frustrating. I know it's not important to Mr. Kim. He's trying to run a business, and I appreciate that. But I also think that, you know, this transitional zone thing, what I, I agree with with Roseanne, that all it meant is that you go from more spacious, more land per unit to higher density as far as residential. You know, if Mr. Kim wanted to have an adult daycare or a children's daycare, he's got property in the back to fence it in, that would seem a reasonable. But, but a dry cleaner, I mean, I'm sorry. The other thing is getting in and out of your property in the morning. Um, I mean, you said, oh, it's easy, you drop off. Well, you've got a bad curve. You know, we'll never get out of the property. Um, I have I take my life in my hands to walk across the street to talk to Mr. and Mrs. Kramer. You know, I literally run across the street. You want to just put more, you know, it's, like I said, I agree that, yeah, it's a transitional, and that's what it says, but my understanding is all I could put on my property is an old folks' home, you know. Um, I'm just frustrated by, you know, people buying property, and it's sort of like if we if we build the baseball field, they will come. Well, you know, I, I just it impacts me, and and I know I'm only one person, but I, I've taken all of the water. Um, I I spent ten thousand dollars last spring to put up a fence abutting Mr. Kim's property because previous tenants who were roofers used my my property as dumping area. A couple of other, uh, another neighbor thought it was open space because I didn't have it built on. They ran, um, you know, um, those, not go-karts, but, you know. Right, so it's like, what do I have to do to protect my property? I, I mean, I'm just frustrated. Thank you. Have any other comments from the public? Yes. Um, 139 Exeter Road. When you talk about privacy, me being directly next door, um, I have no privacy. Um, when they say there's going to be 30, 30 different customers coming in, okay, on average, say 15, 15 different customers a day coming in, okay, times that by how many days a week they're going to be open, that's over 100 different people in that parking lot a week, okay? Um, that's 100, over 100 different people snooping, looking around looking over I mean I can put a fence up yes but that doesn't stop my you know from anyone coming into my property or, or getting nosy um, 
so therefore, I, I feel that there, there's still just no privacy for me whatsoever. Thank you. Any other comments on the public? Not close the public hearing. Have any discussion on the board? Hey, it's my opinion that uh, the public uh, and private rights of others would be affected uh, if we grant this and injured. We're injured. Yeah, if we granted this, and therefore I wouldn't be in favor of approving uh, number three. Are you going for public or just the private rights now? Did I think, well, mostly the private rights. Okay, so that's, that's why I think we want to make yeah, sure, because I don't the, see the any testimony to the public rights yeah. here, but the private uh, rights, they, they okay. The yeah, they are the public, right. <coughs> the, or the abutting public's rights. Okay, motion. I make a motion that by granting the simplex analysis number three, that we would injure the public or private right of others uh, due to the uh, safe access to the properties and the egress from the properties and given the limited scope of the proposed uh, area. We have a second. So move. Discussion on motion? All those in favor of motion sing it by saying aye and raise your right hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? The next criteria is the variance is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. As the board has already noted, um, the ordinance um, defines the R2 zone as a transitional area between low density and, and higher density uses, and we would submit that um, granting the variance uh, in recognition of this transitional area um, is supported by this criteria. Hello, for public hearing. Is discussion on whether the variance is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance? Yes. Doreen Howard, 149 Exeter Road. Um, I agree with um, Mrs. Quark's interpretation of transition from uh, lower, lower density residential to higher density residential. And as I stated previously, all I'm allowed to do is put a nursing home on my property. Um, in the spirit of the neighborhood, um, like I said, if, if it was a, an adult daycare or a children's daycare that's dense people. Uh, this is a commercial use of a service that has nothing to do with dense people. Thank you. And yes. The, uh, the little map that I mentioned last time, uh, which is the, the lot map that got sent out, if you look at that, and if you look at this as a transitional zone that we're talking about, the property in question around here is not quarter acre lots. Almost all of them are in excess of an acre. So they're still pretty, you know, wide open at that part. And then as it gets to town, it gets more dense. And I think, again, that's what the transition is here that we've been trying to get across, is that in this area, it's bigger lots that then go to smaller lots and more density as you get towards town. And it stays about this same size lot all the way down to the golf course. 
Now, if you want to get to the smaller lots, that's up on the developments that were done up in the back of us probably 15 years ago or so. And they used that part of the R2 zone so that they could subdivide that area up there and get some more density in above us. But most of these lots have been in, and a couple were shaved off and sold by the side, and that's why they're smaller ones. They were subdivided afterwards. But this was always pretty large lots that went through this area. Again, that's what we look at as a transition. Thank you. Have any other comments from the public? If not, we we'll close the public hearing. Discussion on the board is finding a fact of whether the variance is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. Using the, using the uh, property for service is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. Where's that? That's his opinion. You're stating your opinion, right, Rich? That's my just opinion right now. Yeah. But he, was, he thought you were reading it somewhere, that's why. No. Uh, just my opinion. Yeah. So no motion, no nothing. Well, I guess in order to find this, you have to find out what was the spirit of the ordinance. Yes. Uh, according to our handbook, um, under number five and page 16, uh, if you would read on the right page, it states, however, when the ordinance contains a restriction against a particular use of the land, the Board of Adjustment would violate the spirit and intent of the ordinance by allowing that use. If an ordinance prohibits industrial and commercial uses in a residential neighborhood, granting permission for such activities would be of doubtful legality. The board cannot change the ordinance. Right. So therefore, looking to put a commercial use such as service in that area would be contrary to the intent of the ordinance. Is that in a new which book is that Page in? Page 16. No, show. This guy here. Page 16. And it states the board cannot change the ordinance in bold print. I must have the wrong book. That's the 2006 uh, no, Office of State Planning Book. No, this one. And it, it's, it states specifically industrial and commercial uses in residential neighborhoods. I don't have that. And that's exactly what this Why is. is. I don't have this stuff. I want to know that. Why is it I don't have it? I should have this. Thank you. Therefore, I think finding a fact would be that the board cannot change the ordinance if it's a commercial or industrial use in a residential neighborhood, according to our handbook. On a positive side of that, it says, in general, the provisions must promote the health, safety, or general welfare of the community. Is, is that a motion on your part? Um, well, that was, I, I felt finding a fact that the board cannot change the ordinance because it's a commercial and the ordinance, if the ordinance prohibits industrial and commercial uses in a residential neighborhood. 17, 16, the, 17. The board cannot change the ordinance. A motion. So, so that would be a, make it a motion. Make it a motion. I'll second that. Mr. Chairman? Yes. 
I'm just trying to finish, get this rest of this through. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor? We have first, I, I don't have a finding of fact here yet. Oh, I thought she had already said that. Finding of fact would be that we cannot change the ordinance. The, the, the Zoning Board of Adjustment doesn't have the right to change an ordinance if an ordinance prohibits industrial and commercial uses in a residential neighborhood. It would be illegal for us to do that. So because we cannot change the ordinance, that would be the finding of fact. Okay, a motion. I'll make a motion that uh, granting criteria three on the simplex analyst that the variance is not consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. Did I word that right? Yeah, because it has to be in the Granting okay, will be called. motion by Roseanne. Correct. Second. I'll second it. That it would be contrary to this, the spirit of the ordinance. Any discussion on motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Raise your right hand. Aye. Vote. Next criteria is whether well, substantial justice is done. We would submit that uh, reducing the number of uh, uses on the property from five to four uh, would be would create substantial justice. According to uh, handbook again on page 16, uh, that the only guiding rule is that any loss to the individual that is not outweighed by a gain to the general public is an injustice. Uh, I, I feel that it would be uh, an injustice to the general public by granting this to the individual and in, in that it's it's not a loss. He's he's got five rental units there and each case must be individually determined. The only guiding rule is that any loss to the individual that is not outweighed by a gain to the general public is an injustice. Your your finding is that the the what is gained by the individual is outweighed by the loss of the general the public. Loss, the, it's it's I consider it injustice to the general public. Mr. Do we have the hearing on this yet? 
No, we didn't have public yet. We, we haven't had public yet. We haven't okay. had public on this. Uh, we'll open a public hearing on whether substantial justice is done. I think you said it basically, but um, the, the point being, if, if what Mr. Kim wants to do is to reduce the number of units, fine, make a bigger apartment out of two of the units that are there. Uh, the injustice of the thing comes back to the same point that all of us have been saying since day one. The injustices make it into a commercial property. The only one who benefits out of it is Mr. Kim because he bought the place to put a commercial property in there and it wasn't zoned that way. So uh, I feel again that, you know, what you stated was really correct. I think it's an injustice to us and the only one who really is going to benefit out of it is Mr. Kim. Are there any com uh, I'm sorry. Any other comments from the public? Now we close the public hearing. I find the fact, I guess that one criteria is the loss is also this potential gain by the public by having a, another place to do that. So there's, there's the, the basically is the public gaining by having a place to do business more than what the uh, abutters are losing on their, uh, by granting a spring. Well, servicing 30 people versus the butters, I don't see how the public got to gain a lot by that end, by that end. Mm -hmm. Okay, the finding of facts, the loss to the general public is outweighed by the gain of the individual. Mm -hmm. A motion. Make a motion that granting criteria number four in the simplex analysts that substantial injustice would be done to the public. I'll second the motion. Is that part of the simplex, or is that an individual? No, 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 no. It's not. No, no. This is the general. The Gen oh, I'm three. sorry. Yeah. General. And number three was general, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Second to that? I did. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by sign. Saying aye and raise your right hand. Aye. 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 The value of the fifth criteria to be met is the value of surrounding properties will not be diminished? Uh, Mr. Chairman, while we understand that um, the board has received considerable testimony in opposition to this application, we do think that uh, the proposed upgrade to the property will leave it in a substantially more attractive uh, condition than it is right now, and that this will not have the effect of diminishing the value of surrounding properties. Thank you. We'll open a public hearing as the value of surrounding properties will not be diminished. Chris Ella, 139 Exeter Road. Now I'm back to the privacy issue again. Yeah, it's gonna you're gonna dress up the property, make it look all you know, make it look nicer. But on a resale <laughs> note for me, 
no one's going to want to buy my property next to a, um, a laundromat. Um, I know I wouldn't. When I bought the house, there was no proposals that um, in the future of any, any businesses being there. Um, I even looked into it. So uh, therefore, um, you know, this is a, a, big, uh, a big issue that concerns me. And uh, this is, you know, it's an investment. Um, and I would like a return on investment. Um, I don't want to lose 30 or 40 percent of my value. Yes. Uh, value of property is always pretty hard to quantify and be able to say it. I tried to get uh, uh, various estimates on this from a couple of real estate agents to, to see what the impact would be, and, and they wouldn't give me anything in writing. But uh, the, num the numbers that I got was that if the commercial property went in there, uh, especially if it was a, uh, a dry cleaner or a, uh, a service business like that, would probably depreciate the property values in the immediate area between 15 and 30 percent. And part of that comes from the access. I mean, you know, the road again, and my driveway is across from it. And I, I know you stated that, you know, it's the same as going into Irving. Well, Irving has a turning lane. Mm. There is no turning lane there. There is no way of putting a turning lane in there because that was investigated when there was other opportunities when there was talk about putting the shopping center up on top of the hill. And you can't fit it in there. And the problem that I have is my driveway comes out before that going that way, and it's going to diminish it because I won't be able to get out in the morning. Unless somebody lets me out, if somebody's sitting out in the lane trying to turn across there, you can't get out, let alone try and go on north because that's impossible. So I think it diminishes the value of my property just because you don't have access there. The only way I'd be able to sell my property then is somebody else wouldn't have put in a commercial, you know, real estate office or something else like that in that property because I've got a big, huge barn that's finished in the back. So the only thing, you know, if it ever did go up in value, it would mean another commercial establishment and me sitting here trying to say the exact same things that I'm fighting against tonight because, you know, I want to put a commercial property in there. So it basically will diminish my property that I've just put five years ago substantial investment into. Have anyone else in the public going to make comment? Not. We close the public hearing. This is usually corroborated by expert testimony as to whether or not it has or not. Um, and I guess it's, we have to we, uh, see we do have no expert testimony given. We have to come to our own judgment as to whether or not it would. My own view, I don't think it would really affect it. It won't appreciate it, won't depreciate it, but that's my own opinion. No, it's, uh, we know what real estate is doing, what it does. And mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I, I believe that the remark Mr. Longbottom made, I, I didn't think of that um, if a commercial entity is put in like that, um, it would seem that the land might be a little more valuable to other commercial entities, and there goes another residential neighborhood. And commercial sprawl along an area that's supposed to be just a transitional area. Uh, and it also states here that CBA members may also draw upon their own knowledge of the area involved in reaching a decision on this and other issues. Uh, because the CBA does not have to accept the conclusions of experts on the question of value or any other point, the function of the board is to decide how much weight or credibility to give testimony and keep in mind that the burden is on the applicant to convince the CBA that it is more likely than not that the project will not decrease values. Uh, whereas with everything stated here tonight, and I, I think you'll see a, a transition of a transitional area turning into a commercial area if, if uh, something like this is granted. And, uh, and therefore, I find that would be basically finding a fact that the, uh, the property would diminish, and, and we have the capability as a board to determine that with just our knowledge of the area and what it could do. Um, until in the future, which so you're would be saying other commercial uses. The commercial use would, would diminish the properties? Yes. Okay. 
Mr. Chairman, I, yeah. I would voice my opinion on that also. I would concur with Ms. Quacks, but in addition to that, any person whose value in the property would increase would be Mr. Kemp. Everybody else, I, I would, my opinion would be their values would decrease. So he would be, um, what's that, how I, he would be the only person that would benefit from that, where the residents surrounding it would be in the, in the minority. Unless they wanted to make it commercial. Then Unless, it would, yeah, exactly. Then and, it and, would like, appreciate and again, it. what we're doing there is mm -hmm. opening up the door yeah. for commercial development. So we have a finding of facts, or so we need a motion. Is that correct? Uh, I'm ready to find any facts. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of a wording. Don't you have a tape recorder, Mr. Fillion? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they never have to use this. <laughs> the motion. Uh, motion that under criteria number five, that the value of the surrounding properties will be diminished. Can we second? I'll second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion to sing five say nine, raise your right hand. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay, now we have to have a motion for the entire variance to the effect that the criteria not having been met, all the, the conditions for all the criteria for variance have not been met, therefore the motion for variance is denied. I'll make a motion to deny the variance to permit a service unit use in the R2 zone to utilize the pre-existing non-conforming four res res residential dwellings for dry cleaning business. The lot, the lot is located at tax map U5 lot 7 R2 zone That's a, because four of the five criteria have failed. I'll second that motion. And Simplex 3 failed also. I don't we have to say, just they have not all been met. Okay, have not all been met. <coughs> Discussion on a motion? All those in favor of the motion, sing five, say nine, raise your right hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. That was the end of the hearing. Thank you for your consideration. Good night. The other item I have on. I can. On? Minutes? May 8th? I look at another one. It said that there's. I never did get copies of the May 5th meeting. May 8th. May 8th minutes. And I never got it either. I don't. You know, I got everything I thought I I never got it. So basically, we will continue that till the next meeting as the. Uh, we have any other business for the. Just, uh, if I may, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yep. I've got it printed here. Uh, anybody doesn't have a copy of the master plan? I have that. Like yeah. And if anybody would like a copy of the zoning ordinance? Do I have that? Did you give me that earlier? I'm give you another one. Oh, God. <laughs> so if anybody would like a copy of the site How many plan? storage? I need the site plan. Site plan review regulations. I need a site plan. That, I, that I didn't get. Thank you. Thank you. And the zoning. Why would we be interested in that? The site plan review? Yes. So you know what is in your business. What? What? 
so you know what isn't your business. Oh. <laughs> you, I kind of thought he said, it's none of your business and hers. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why would you say that? We have this from as a client. Well, yeah, and that's the stuff you already gave me tonight, right? Some of this. I can't remember what you have. <laughs> you I can't do know now that you have the 2006 handbook. I have the 2006 yeah, handbook. And the master plan, zoning ordinance, and we have Title Three oh, okay. land use What's codes by and regulations. This, yes. This home until I have tonight's read agenda. That. Yes. <laughs> I have Board of Adjustments yeah. in New Hampshire, oh. January 05. Don't you that, throw that <laughs> one away and keep 06, unless you want to keep that for historical no. records. Do I have, is this the one 06? And you have the one that's 06 right here, you're earlier. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any other business? All done, Dan? Just one other comment on the uh, term. When we, when we discuss reasonable use, it's, it's not that the applicant is proposing a reasonable use. It really is as if is the lot already already under a reasonable use. It isn't the proposal of it if, if it is being used reasonably. That is not Just the simplex. Clarity. That is not the simplex decision. The simplex Are decision. The, prime, huh? the only Are thing it says is this this property a reasonable right. use. Prior to simplex was okay. can so the property to. be used yeah, for any permitted uses. Permitted if it can be used for a permitted uses, then you could not grant a variance. The simplex ordinance says that, is this a reasonable use of the property? And that's exactly what they found out at, at simplex. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Court says that we have to determine whether this is a reasonable use of the property. If we determine it's a reasonable use of the property, then we go ahead. If we determine it's not a reasonable use, then we can't go it now. That you, you're, you've turned the simplex head around as far as I'm concerned on that. Simplex prior to simplex, there's nothing. You only had to decide whether there was any use of property that could be done mm -hmm. according to the zoning regulation. Simplex says that if the use is reasonable, then you have to consider. You can't arbitrarily cut it out like you could prior to simplex. That was the, the big finding. And then Bosha, of course, came in and got into the uh, air difference between an area variance and a usage use variance. I'll oh. get a clarification on that for you. I don't, I don't need a clarification. We've had several clarifications on that already. In fact, you, you read the Supreme Court decision on uh, Simplex, and that, that is the really only uh, big criteria that Simplex came out with. And, and, okay. and also, uh, if, if we can go back to 2.09 for the R2 district and the purpose of that ordinance, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, if maybe a letter from you, Dan, or a letter from us, for them to collect, it, it almost seems as if, as if the, um, it wasn't written correctly. If Just read that second sentence. Yeah. It's not properly written. And it's very confusing. It is intended that high quality neighborhoods with the greater density and greater mix of uses than would be permitted in the R one residential district shall be accommodated. And they didn't and they didn't do that when they when they used the permitted uses. Yeah, there's more in the R one. That's right, which yeah. is, which more is in the contrary R1. to what it's it's the and it's completely contrary to the so, first Portion. When, you look, when yeah, you look at right. R1, the uses they included in R1 were the existing uh, workout center, mm -hmm. the existing golf course. Those are the oh, two golf extras. course is not R1. The existing use, the existing. If you look golf at the golf course is B3. If you look at the chart. No, it's B. I thought I saw it as a um, B3. No, M4 and R1 golf course. Oh, the M4? Yeah, the M4 and R1. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. B3 yeah. is the planes, right? Right. Yeah. M4 is the, uh, is the golf course. You see that the golf, golf course. course is permitted in R1. And it, you'll see that those three items, the conference center, the recreation facility, and the golf course is permitted in R1 but not permitted in R2. So those three, which were probably already in existence prior to the adoption of the ordinance, probably resulted in the uses of R2. 
they were already there when the ordinance was written. What, what's uh, M4 for use? M4 uses for the golf course, you mean? Well, M4. Single you family. Or you can have a golf course. Take care, bed and, and breakfast, hotel, one. Okay. conference. So those three uses were probably already there when they wrote the ordinance and just included them because they were, yeah. rather than making non what, What's Where's the golf course in R1? Isn't the uh, uh, no, the golf course is golf. not two actually. No, it's an M4. M is that M4 down there? Uh, okay, yeah. M4. Motion to adjourn. Do we motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Are you, is your zone on one? I'm on one. That's, that might have been the golf course. No, no, no. That that one. was done many, many, many years ago. Which? The golf course was uh, M4. That's been there for. Yeah.